with PPI hot and CPI cold, and a Fed that says his next move is a cut. Are we on our way to the moon or just ready to reverse? Let's go. For a fourth week in a row, SPY moved higher, and it appears that we only had a 5% pullback. Now, NVIDIA reports after close on Wednesday. Well, I'm sure that that can certainly move markets, but being that we're on the bull train again, setting all-time highs, Will we just do more of the same? And I'm sure you're wondering where are the key levels of support and resistance as we move forward with this bull train behind us? Like I said last week, if the prints were cool, then you better be long or you'll be wrong. So let's dig a little deeper this week, starting with SPY. Let's start by looking at the weekly on SPY. And when we look at this volume here, we can see that we moved higher on what looked like a weekly lower volume once again. Now, people will try to tell you that moving higher on low volume is a bad thing, but in reality, typically the market sells on high volume, but moves higher on low volume. And that's why they say the markets take the stairs up and the elevators down. So now that we're comfortably back above the all-time highs, I think it's safe to say that there won't be any type of corrective wave, at least for now as this pullback was only a 5% pullback. And now that we're above all-time highs, once again, I'm sure everyone's wondering where is our support levels and where are our resistance levels? So going into next week, there's a couple things we're gonna wanna focus in on. One is the five exponential moving average, and the other one is the upper Bollinger Band. And next week, that will be expanding. You can see here that in the past, and this is very similar if we were to look at any past, form a channel here between the five exponential moving average and this upper Bollinger Band that the stock market typically wants to respect. And like I said, as this upper Bollinger Band will go ahead and expand next week without going through all the detail and showing you a different chart other than the weekly, I went ahead on the daily time frame and using Elliott Waves, went ahead and pinpointed the 540 area as the likely stop that we'll go to within the next week. And this five exponential moving average as it moves higher will likely become a support and retesting this breakout area and holding it is normal market behavior before moving higher. But if for some reason we get below this area and start moving lower, then something else is going on. I think it's important to note that right now there is a lot of cash on the sidelines and if Nvidia earnings are positive, I really only see this thing pumping higher. And currently this quarter with a 64% beat rate, that's kind of more or less what you expect in a quarter and so this will only help the market pump higher as not only do we have TA on our side, but the fundamentals are lining up as well. Flipping back to the weekly, if we look down here at the bottom, we see that this MACD line is ready to go ahead and cross above the signal, maybe as early as next week. And that means we've recaptured that bullish momentum. And if we take a quick peek at the Qs, you know, the NASDAQ weekly, we see pretty much the same thing here. But let's talk a little bit more about the S&P 500 by looking at a heat map of the weekly, as this will help us focus on the different S&P sectors. Now, one thing that may be a little bit concerning is that we're seeing some of the consumer cyclicals they've been getting hit, and most of that has been due to a drag on earnings with these companies. As the consumer has been looking a little bit weaker, and I'm not so concerned about industrials as they've had quite a run, and maybe they're just cooling off a bit before taking the next leg higher. There's been a lot of talk about utilities and how all this AI stuff is power hungry. So if you need more energy for these little chips, uh, will we see more money start to pile into utilities as they've been a laggard over the last couple years. And I think a lot of MMs feel like it's a safe place to pile into. And even healthcare is putting their back into this. So... Uh, it feels like all the sectors now are starting to see some love. When we look at the percentage of S&P 500 stocks trading above their 20-day simple moving average, we see that it pretty much went nowhere this week. Uh, and it can continue to stay like this if you look at the past. Staying at a position where you are overbought is you know, not a 
crazy thing for the market to do for a while. It can stay there. It doesn't have to just go ahead and reverse off of this. Uh, once it's come up to this level, it can continue to move sideways for a while. And when we look at the percentage of S&P 500 stocks trading above their 50-day moving average, we see that this guy could still move higher uh, after we get NVIDIA earnings. And again, you know, once it hits that level moving sideways that we've seen in the past, doesn't mean we're just gonna go ahead and reverse or fail off of that as well. Once you get bullish, typically the market stays bullish. And I think that's something important to remember as we will see many buy the dip uh, traders out there and investors alike. Now, I went ahead and added Bitcoin last week as we saw this nice descending trend line here. And this week we had a breakout. Is this guy on its way to 100,000? Only time will tell, but I certainly was a buyer of this in the past week. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold it versus trade it as the ultimate risk asset is signaling risk on. And if this is signaling risk on, I can't imagine the market going in a different direction. Talking about risky assets this week, I went ahead and added RK to the mix as this guy also represents some higher risk beta stocks. Now this guy went ahead and got above its 200 day simple moving average, but right now it's near a cluster of moving averages here and until this guy can get above its 20 day simple moving average, it isn't exactly full bull yet, but at this point uh, I'm ready to take a chance that we're gonna go ahead and maybe move higher on this one or at least retest this 20 simple moving average next week. And being that this has been consolidating for quite some time now and putting in a series of what we'll call higher lows, if this guy breaks out, it sure as heck could be impulsive. Now, if we flip over to the Russell, when we look at IWM, two out of three ain't bad, but something we haven't seen for a while is three for three. And what we notice here is that this five exponential moving average, at least for the past couple weeks, has been acting as support. And just as we discussed on SPY, this upper Bollinger Band can act as a form of resistance. And now that we see that these Bollinger Bands have been squeezing for the last several weeks, this impending move can be impulsive to the upside. And that means as we're likely to hold this five exponential moving average on the weekly, this guy could really have a move to the upside on a breakout. And for once in a long time, we'll have all three moving averages, moving ores in the same direction, which is super bullish. On the cool CPI print this week, the US 10Y yields, it went ahead and got slammed. But then as we went into the end of the week, it went ahead and recovered. Is this nothing more than a bear flag getting ready to move lower? Well, I'm sure hoping so as my TMF 3X TLT bond trade, uh, this will help it move higher. And I think this will also help equities as well. The VIX, well, it went ahead and got crushed this week and that's music to my ears. As this guy is now under 12, no, the VIX isn't broken, but instead it's signaling that swing trading is in full force. If we look at the economic calendar for the week ahead, we notice that uh, JP is speaking at a commencement event and I can't imagine him uh, saying anything there that's too crazy. And then the first part of the week, all we really have is some Fed speak, and I don't see that moving markets too much as we go into Wednesday, where we have those pesky Fed meeting minutes where people are saying maybe we see some of the members leaning a little bit more hawkish. Honestly, I'm not so sure that that may upset the apple cart too much with NVIDIA reporting after close on Wednesday. And then going into Thursday, you know, sometimes PMI data can move markets a little bit as services PMI has been showing to be one of the stickier areas. And then we have durable goods on Friday. But overall, remember that this week we're going into a holiday week with Memorial Day on Monday, the following Monday being off. So normally volume is a bit lower in this trading week as the MMs head out for the Hamptons. So this typically supports bulls pushing prices higher as typically we have to sell on high volume, not low volume. For this week, that's all I have for now until the next video and we'll see you then.